Hey, there's one of my holdback IMG Motley VPIT positive females. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. I want to wish you a happy Black Friday. Hopefully, you guys are doing a lot of shopping. And you can check out my auctions at the auction site at palumbospythons.com. We got some cool auctions that'll be up, I think, tomorrow night. Check those out. I'm not sure when this video is going to go up, so check it out at palumbospythons.com. I was uh, Pablo. For some reason, I had a miscue. He came here in the morning and he, for some reason, didn't, decided not to uh, text me or wake me up. And he just thought we weren't home. I don't know what he already thinks who we are. <laughs> Pablo, I know you're watching this. I love you. Have a, have, a, have a relaxing Thanksgiving weekend. You deserve it. But uh, so I had to do a little spot cleaning myself today. And so I figured I'll do some videos while we're cleaning stuff out and looking at the snakes, filming videos for my species nutrition website because we have black friday sale we have a cyber monday sale you guys can check that out at speciesnutrition.com and if you look at our species nutrition instagram you'll see the uh, coupon codes for both black friday and uh, cyber monday if you guys are into that stuff all right having got that out of the way uh, we're gonna go in there like i said and i'm gonna take a look at some hodgepodge of stuff that i got in the snake room enclosures we're gonna look at we're gonna look at boas ball pythons Carpet pythons. You never know what I'm going to look at. So those are the days that are fun. It's kind of like a, I always say potpourri, but it's really not. It's kind of like a whatever strikes my fancy type of day. Let's take a look and see what's going on. All right, I got my female Bowens python outside here. Kids are off from school today, but they're taking a nap. So I'm doing a little filming. And there's my little girl. She's, uh, I think she's going to do really well outside. She's too small right now for me to put her outside, but I'm gonna definitely build her an outdoor enclosure. The boy is definitely, the male's definitely old enough. Big enough to go outside. She, um, I can just tell they like to be outside these things. They're just, that's gonna be the, the key, I think, to breeding them down the road. But she's tiny. I mean, she's not like teeny tiny, but I just think she's a little small for outside right now. Maybe in like another six months in the spring of like 2023, I'll build them an outdoor enclosure. She should be big enough by then. And then, you know, I might cohabitate them. I might make them two separate sections, one for each of them have their own little area. And then with a divider, I can always pull out at a later date, kind of like I did with the olive pythons. And that'll probably wind up leading to me getting two pairs of bullets instead of one, knowing me. She's looking great. She really doesn't even have her full adult colors yet. She's close. She still, I still see she's got some reds in her. And her tail area is black. I think she's got, I think she's gonna get a little darker. The male is much, much darker. So I think these are still some juvenile colors we're seeing. They're not, I don't think she's completely gone through that ontogen, the color change. She's really pretty though. And that's what you like to see in your boa tubs. This is my beautiful Hypo Honduran T-positive blood. Female that I'm being bred by a Hypo Onyx Het Blood Het Anary 2 Het. What did I forget? Honduran T-positive. <laughs> so we can create a visual form of this female with the Onyx gene added with this male. So that's what we're trying for. Let's see what we get. I like that lot though. All right, here's my beautiful Inca, Costa Rican T positive, possible het leopard, male that I picked up from um, Warren Booth, my good friend. Uh, we did a little trade, showed him to you when, I think I showed him to you when he came in. Looking really beautiful. Too small to breed, but hopefully next year we'll get him into the breeding rotation. I love Inca. Inca is one of my favorite boa morphs. Inca Costa Rican T positive is really kind of cool. And if we have a hep leopard here, that's going to make it even better because I got some double het girls that are het for leopard and het for Costa Rican T positive. So I got a female waiting for this boy next year. I'm going to breed. 
that we can produce the visual Costa Rican leopard, Costa Rican deposit, I should say, leopard Inca. That would be cool. That would be very cool. All right, just checking out my super fire diamonds in their enclosure here. Look at that. They shed. It looks like a like an alien nest is left here. <laughs> There's my other one sitting on a tree branch. I told you they love the trees. They like to climb. They're never, never on the ground. Probably they just go down there to drink. They're always sitting on the shelf here, basking in the UV light or in the tree. It's crazy how different their personalities are now that they're in this big enclosure tree branches and all that cool stuff. It's cool to, you know, can't put every snake like this. I wish I could. I need a hundred thousand square foot building. <laughs> and a lot more people helping me clean, but it is cool to have a couple cool enclosures, you know, in your facility. Look at that beauty. It's a female IMG labyrinth boa with the hypogene in there as well. So it's a hypolabby IMG. Obviously the hypogene will inhibit some of that black pigment from coming in. She's still young. She's gonna get a lot more darkness in her. Look at her head, it's starting to really turn black. But the labby gene also reduces pigment. People don't realize that they're much lighter. So she'll never get totally black, but she's gonna get blacker than this. And I have two of these. So I'm probably going to sell one. This one might be available. If you reach out to me, this could be a really good holiday pickup. Maybe I'll take a picture and post it, too. She's not cheap, but this could certainly lead to some cool stuff. IMG's jeans are amazing. And I love my, having my dark black snakes, you know. But I like the ones that don't turn completely black because I think you get much more interesting pattern and contrast to them. Uh, whereas, you know, it's good to have a couple black, black, black snakes, but Labby gene is like such a versatile gene. I think it's going to be very popular in the future. Obviously, the super form is the crystal, which is a blue eyed leucistic with white and pink patterning. What would a leucistic version of this look like? What would the crystal? IMG look like that? I don't know. Would it even have any black in it? That's a good question. But the IMG Labby definitely looks interesting. And you can see the labyrinth pattern becomes much more pronounced and outlined. Look at that eye. This is, I've had a lot of Labbies. This is like the coolest looking one. And once again, she's young still, so once she gets older, she's going to look spectacular. One of my favorite boas in my collection. This is a Sun Glow. VPI T positive crystal. So it's a hypo VPI T positive, which is a T positive line of albino, with two copies of the labby gene. So we got the labby, super labby, which is a crystal. We got the hypo gene, and then we also have the VPI T positive gene. So we actually have a red eyed crystal. Remember, crystals are usually blue eyed, but when you take away so much more pigment using the VPI T positive and the hypo gene, it turns that blue eye into a into a pinkish eye and just a gorgeous snake. I mean, who doesn't like a, a beautiful white snake like this? And what potential, right? I mean, if you're into the VPIT positive and the Labby, you know, projects, you've got two copies of VPIT positive here, which gives you the visual, and you got two copies of, of hype of the labyrinth gene, excuse me. So everything you breed this to is gonna be labyrinth at least. If you breathe this to a VPIT positive, everything's going to be VPIT positive. And if you breathe to something that's not VPIT positive, everything's going to be 100% hit. So this, this girl's a real powerhouse, you know. And that's why we love her. Now let's contrast that girl, okay, who is a super labby and a visual VPIT positive. This boy is a hypo one copy of labby, and he's hit VPIT positive. He certainly doesn't look like a normal hypo labby, though. And I've discussed this before. I really think the head form of VPIT positive definitely is a vi has visual cues. It's lighter. It changes pattern a little bit. Obviously, hypo gene could do a little bit of that, too. But 
this boy is really, really nice. He almost has a blue eye, too. And once again, he's only got one copy of Labby, and, and he's a hypo. He's a hypo Labby, but he's had DPIT positive. And that makes him a super powerhouse. Imagine breeding him to that girl. We would get, we would get super hypo, DPIT positive crystals. But he's, he's gorgeous. He's got great potential in and of himself. Just imagine breeding him to any visual VPIT positive female. You're going to produce all VPIT positives. 50% of them will be labbies, and 50% of that will be hypo labbies. So, tremendous, tremendous potential here. All right, look at this beautiful Kaw albino. Looks way more than the Kaw albino, and you'd be right if you said that. Because it's 66% head blood and 66% head leopard. I would bet a million dollars this has got leopard in it. Look at that red head. I can see the leopardish face, the red flushing in there, and the, the saturation on the saddles, or along the sides, I should say. That looks head leopard to me. But And the saddles are so aberrant that I would almost bet that it's head blood, too. This thing doesn't, hardly looks like just a pure uh, call albino. Actually, it even looks IMG with that eye, right? Beautiful. This mail will probably be available. I can't keep everything. Anyone's interested, hit me up. This guy will breed probably next season, easily. Hey, there's one of my holdback IMG Motley VPIT positive females. She is, I would swear there's more genes in this girl, I really do. I don't, I mean, look at that head. It, you know what's weird, why I always think there's more genes and why people always think that too, is because every IMG, you know, VPIT positive, or even IMG Motley VPIT positive looks completely different. They're, they're, they're not, when the IMG gene is involved, we don't know how it lays down pigment in different snakes. It seems to do it differently in all different snakes. It's almost like it's got its own genome. <laughs> <laughs> that it, no two snakes ever look alike. I mean, now if a snake turns completely black, that's a different story, but in, in T-positive stuff, hypo stuff, that prevents the laying down of, of all black, you get a completely different, like, as I call it, paint splotch of, of colors because it just depends on, you know, where the particular snake we're looking at, you know, body allows them to lay pigment down. It just doesn't happen the same in, in all snakes, which makes them very unique. Here's one of my favorite carpet pythons. He is spectacular. He is a zebra, granite, possible caramel male. So he's visual granite, which is a recessive trait. He's a zebra, which just gives you that like, really broken up pattern, which is really not as, as apparent with the combined with the granite, because this granite is broken up already. It just breaks it up a little bit more. And then he could possibly be caramel, which would be nice if he was. He is kind of light. He doesn't even look like a carpet, really. <laughs> He's got a beautiful head. I got him from Eric Burke a number of years ago, 18. And I have yet to get him to breed for me yet, and it's not, I don't think it's his fault, I think it's the female's fault I have him with. I have him with this heck branded female, but she always gets sick or something goes wrong every single year. I'm hoping this year is going to be the year that we're going to get these guys to breed, produce some awesome babies. Because she's, she's a zebra jungle jag, heck granite. so we can produce super zebras, which are patternless. We can produce granites, we can produce, you know, all kinds of cool stuff if this, if, if this guy proves out to be Caramel, we can get caramels in there as well. I think we could breed some really nice babies. But you can see he's beautiful. All right, last snake of the day. As I'm cleaning here on this uh, Black Friday. If you guys uh, want to pick up any species nutrition products, we have a really good Black Friday sale, except I'll probably won't get this video up until tomorrow. It'll be too late. But we're going to have a Cyber Monday sale too over at speciesnutrition.com. Check that out. We're gonna be uh, giving away a free pumpkin spice isolize, my whey protein isolate, if you spend $60 or more. And if you put the coupon code CYBER25 and you will get 25% off the entire speciesnutrition.com website. So there's a shameless 
nutrition company plug on my steak video. There you go. That's some crossover potential right there. This, I don't think I've shown you this girl before. This I got from my good friend Doug Cheddarick in a trade. It's a pastel double head candy clown. Now, so he's head for a clown and head for candy. What a great combination that might be. And I've seen some of those candy clowns. They're beautiful. I'd love to produce some of those. It's funny how albino clown just never caught on. Just can't really tell too much. It's kind of patterns not as distinct, but candy clowns, those things pop like crazy. They are beautiful. Um, I'm a few years off this product. This is these guys are from this year. This is the male and my female is just a regular um, double head candy clown. So these guys eventually will breed. Some were in the future, but not anytime soon. All right, there's my buying a water monitor. He was hiding all day. He just came out because I put a mouse down there for him. I'm sure he's gonna go eat. You know, he doesn't really like me that much yet. And we haven't really bonded yet, but he doesn't run away necessarily either. I mean, I got a camera on him. Most times animals will run. He's, I think, more curious than anything. I think he's not sure about me. Yeah, there he goes. I should've kept my mouth shut. All right, I'm gonna close it up so he can eat his food in peace. His lights went out already, so it's time for, they come out in the dark and they'll eat. Let me leave alone. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I hope you have a really fun weekend planned with the family. I'm sure you're going to be doing a lot of shopping. Seems like that's what everyone does. You know, this, this uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this whole weekend after Thanksgiving has become such a, a shopping lunacy, I call it. That, uh, And we all do it, right? Because everyone offers all these crazy deals and and all that stuff. But I, you know, I, I think that if you, uh, what happens is people wind up buying stuff they don't really need. <laughs> so <laughs> save your money, buy what you really want. That's what I tell people. You don't have to buy it just because it's, it's on sale, you know? Uh, so that's my words of wisdom for the week. <laughs> As you see, we're, uh, we're in the breeding season here. We're, you know, no eggs on the ground, no boa litters, which is kind of like a, a little bit of a relaxing, uh, I gotta tell you, I love getting, you know, eggs catching and I love eggs on the ground. It's fun and all that stuff. And we always wanna produce new stuff, but sometimes it's good to get a little break in the action. And now seems to be the time. It's usually like December, January, February, a little, there's a little low. I mean, I might get a litter here and there, but I'm more, a, more than likely a clutch here and there, but that's about it. I don't think we're gonna be getting any, any major amounts of stuff until probably the springtime, which is, it was, like I said, give me some time to move some animals, list some stuff and, you know, build some more enclosures and, and cool stuff in the room. So that's the way it works. Uh, we have, like I said, a, a super sale on the speciesnutrition.com. So we're pushing that this whole weekend. I have the auctions up at palumbospythons.com. So you can check that out as well. And uh, if you guys have any ideas for videos you'd like to see next week, let me know, put them in the comments below. And as I remind you every day, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back Monday morning.